let's look at rotations. Now, rotations compared to reflections are a thousand times harder. And I know you're saying, ah, I got this, don't worry. The truth is, is it is. It's much harder to see a rotation in our mind versus line symmetry or reflections. And so it, I want you to be aware that I'm going to teach a lot of this using my friend Patty Paper. Um, it will make something a little challenging very easy. So you'll see that happen. So first of all, let's look at the notation here. This is a rotation uh, about point U 90 degrees. Now remember, we talked about rotational order. Rotational order of 90 means counterclockwise, so it's going to go in this direction. And the way I do this is as easy as this. I quickly sketch my shape. There it is. Mark U. Now, I'm going to do a 90 degree turn, and I'm on a grid, so I'm going to actually make a plus sign here. That plus sign is going to help me to know when 90 has taken place. And I'm going to go counterclockwise. So watch as I turn. I'm going to go until my plus sign is upright again. There is my new location. And now I can just remember where uh, the points were and then record them. So this would be the resultant shape here. And I can label it uh, correctly. You know, uh, this would be, of course, B prime, A prime, D prime, C prime. And that would be its resultant 90. Counterclockwise, because it's 90 degrees, and it turns uh, perfectly 90 degrees. Now, how do you do this without my magical patty paper? Well, the way I always did it was I would make a line from the center of rotation to one point, like C, so straight up one. To turn it 90 degrees would mean, instead of being vertical, it would be horizontal, straight across one. There's where C prime would be. Do the same thing. Straight up, one, two, three, gets me to B. So if I turn 90, that would be left, one, two, three, gets me there. So I basically count kind of an up and over, up and over, and then turn the shape to do it. Um, but patty paper obviously creates a, a much simpler environment. Here we have a rotation, of, again, of 90. Uh, this one's a little, well, let's do it the other technique, see if you like this. So to get to this one, I'm going to go up and over one. So I'm going to turn that 90 degrees. That would mean left first and then up. So G is going to land here. To get to F, 1, 2, 3, straight up. So it's going to be left, 1, 2, 3. This is where F will, F prime will reside. E is up 2, left 2. So that would be left 2, down 2. And that would create my location. I must be honest with you, I've been using that technique for many years, and that has not always produced the easiest understanding for students. Once I said, hey, pick up a piece of patty paper and mark it. Now watch how simple things are. You'll never go back, as they say, uh, once you have this kind of uh, help. So I'm going to make my plus sign. And so I'm going to turn it, done deal. See how beautiful that is? The last one is a negative 90 rotation. Let's zoom in so you can see that. The notations are kind of small there. But I noticed that it's negative 90 this time. So instead of going counterclockwise, off we go in a clockwise manner. And again, I am going to choose to simply move my points using my patty paper. So this time I'm going to go clockwise. Tick, 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 tick. Stop right there. So I take a quick scan of where these are. This one was here. This one was here. Let me scan my last one. Two over, two up, right here. And what used to be a tricky problem just turned into a much easier problem. Loving the 
patty paper, as they say. All right, uh, there is a negative 90 rotation. Be careful of direction. Now, let me just quickly uh, do a likewise thing with uh, coordinates here, just to get a sense of it. I won't do all of these, but let's take a look. This says rotate uh, 90 degrees A to get a prime. Now, there are patterns here. We'll study these patterns at another time. But I'm going to take my A, and I'm going to rotate it. What did it say? 90. And so here I go, right there. So it would end at negative 5 and negative 2. Negative 5 and negative 2. Where would B go? Actually, I should have done all three of these at the same time. What am I thinking? So let's do it. So let's turn it now. 90 degrees, again, is a counterclockwise direction. So B, let's see, where was B? B is this guy, he is negative 7 and positive 5. Negative 7, positive 5. Where is C? C is at negative 4 and 3. So you can do more of these. You don't need me to do more of them. You just have to be careful of what direction they're asking. Um, in these cases, these were positive 90. Down here, these were negative 90. Be careful. There is a beautiful pattern that's found here. We're not going to maybe discuss it right now, but if you look carefully, you might see something happening there. One last thing. Let's get to my favorite kinds of questions, these ones with about the shapes and connected here. This says rotate about, O oh, 90 degrees A. So if A was to rotate 90, that would mean like this, and it would land at G. Let's rotate about, oh, 180 point B. Here's B, and if you rotate that 180, it would be on the opposite side, opposite uh, distance there of F. Beautiful. This one says rotate D about, oh, 270. Now, that would put it at 90 at B, uh, 180 at H, 270 at F. This says negative 180, which actually, who cares? Negative 180, positive 180 is the same. So in other words, what's the opposite side of O uh, that, uh, from H is D? Now the last two kind of get tricky. So this happens to you, so take a look. The center of rotation changes to F in this case. So let's rotate E about F. E, okay, so here's our center. We're rotating E about F 90 degrees. So it would actually rotate to the center point O. Let's rotate about B, about B, the point A 180 degrees. 180 degrees would map it all the way over here to C. So be careful when the center changes, but the Ideas are the same and uh, get a little interested. Good luck.